good morning. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name's Matt. I'm one of the students at Redeemer Church and I've been asked to share just a few thoughts with you today that will um, hopefully encourage you in the Lord. Um, so after three <laughs> quite turbulent years, I've just finished up my degree. Uh, and one of the things that's come up time and again during my stay in Durham has been the concept of uh, gifts uh, and their many implications. It's just one of those things that God keeps bringing up and causing me to think over just time and time again. Um, so recently I've been reading through the Archbishop of Canterbury's book uh, called Dethroning Mammon, uh, Making Money Serve Grace. It's a really great little um, devotional. And in one of the chapters, uh, one of the chapters is called What We Receive, We Treat As Ours. Uh, the, so the book itself is mainly focused on kind of finance and how to understand the value of money in light of uh, the gospel. Uh, but this chapter in particular hones in on how everything uh, we receive is is a gift. Uh, so at one point he quotes Paul's letter to uh, the Corinthian church. He says, uh, for who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why did you boast as if it were not a gift? Um, so too often, kind of anything we have, regardless of how we came to possess it, uh, we quickly treat it as our own, as if we'd made it or somehow kind of conjured it up ourselves. Um, yeah, so regardless of, of how much or how little we have, uh, we very, very quickly safeguard it away, kind of keeping it. As a, as a scarce resource for our own selves and I know that's very true of me um, especially in terms of finance but um, I think one thing that's been challenging me recently and might challenge you as well especially in this kind of time is how Jesus kind of treats gifts um, that he's given and what he does with them um, so Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth and yet he doesn't count this power, this equality that he has with the father as, as something to be exploited or something to be kind of hidden away and used for his own benefit. Um, instead, Jesus uses the gift that he is given to bless others and um, to empty himself out and to live a life of gift and grace. And we're called to be imitators of Christ. Um, so that's a real kind of challenge for us to live by um, his example of of giving in this kind of upside down kingdom that God calls us into. It's a challenge to see kind of what gifts uh, we've been given, whether they're physical or like um, just any kind of any kind of gift or ability, um, material or otherwise, and see how we can serve others with them. Um, and God's been really reminding me recently that we're, we're a community built on and surrounded by gift and um, in fact the church is known as the community of, of the gift the holy spirit the one who comes down on the day of pentecost and births the church he's referred to um, in latin as the donum which literally means the given and um, but that's not all if we kind of follow this notion of, of the spirit and the holy spirit's gift it takes us even further afield and um, it challenges us to see life itself as a gift. So it's, it's God's breath, his spirit, who animates and sustains us. And if we know God's breath as a gift, and it's from that place that we can begin to see the kind of wider scope of life, of all that we are and all that we do, and how it's so intimately wrapped up in God's eternal giving and sustaining. It's so important because seeing life um, in all of its aspects as a gift helps us to kind of orient ourselves towards God. Uh, the knowledge of something as a gift um, and the recognition of something as such kind of mediates a relationship. So, for instance, um, one of my friends recently bought me uh, John Mark Comer's Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Um, I know Ali's recommended it in the Embodied in Christ series. Um, and, you know, that, that says something about us as friends, like our, our shared interests. Um, but it also points to the kind of the care and the consideration and love that my friend has for me, that he's willing to go and you know, spend money on me. Um, 
<laughs> but in the same way, recognizing life as a gift helps to mediate our relationship with God. Because the gifts were given point beyond themselves to say something of the beauty and nature of their giver. Um, in this case, the giver of all good gifts, God, and his immense love for each of us. So to, to wrap it up, God's really been challenging me to look at this idea of, of gift in, in two ways. The first is, is recognising that all that we have uh, as a gift is important as it challenges us to live self-sacrificially in memory of the one who gave it all. And secondly, kind of understanding life as a gift helps us see even more clearly our relationship with God and our dependence on him. Gifts bind us to him in thanksgiving and invite us to delve deeper into the mysteries of his love. Thank you and God bless. Have a great day.